diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds, and we are presented by the Hula Bowl. Uh, today I have with me Michael Garachi. Uh, he's a center out of uh, Maine. Uh, nice to have you on, sir. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, I mean, obviously we got a guy who um, some people believe is like the, you know, best small school center prospect going into this season. So uh, definitely looking forward to uh, talking to you and hearing your story. Um, why don't you kind of go ahead and uh, give us like the framework there in that background. Where, tell me where you're from and how you got there to Maine. So I'm originally from Ballard, Maryland. Grew up in a small town, you know, northern part of Maryland. Um, I went to John Carroll High School. Uh, transferred in there my junior year. Previously went to Simone and Wright High School before that. Um, my little journey going to Maine was, I mean, I was, you know, like every other prospect that ends up in Maine, we were all under-recruited. Didn't really have any of those big schools looking at us, you know, some CAA schools, but nothing crazy. And then uh, Maine took a shot at me, offered me a partial scholarship coming out of college, high school, I mean. And then I took the opportunity, take, take, took my official visit, accepted my offer on my official visit, and I've been here ever since. Cool, man. So um, obviously been at Maine for a while. Um, what makes Maine so special to you? I mean, I feel like the within the football team it's the family environment here i mean if you if anyone ever has opportunity coming up here there's not much to do up here we have bangor ball harbor is about an hour and a half uh east of us but again there's not much to do here especially in the winter time so it's really bonding and growing with your friends is what makes this place a really special place that i can tell that not a lot of other schools have gotcha and i know you're actually uh, also a very busy student there what are you doing there as a student so I recently just graduated with a double major in accounting and uh, finance with a minor in economics. And I'm actually pursuing to get my MBA in one year to be done by the spring of 2023. Crazy. So definitely a, a, lot, a lot of going on in the classroom there as well. So um, Mike, I, I mean, I know you've uh, developed a lot over the years from our previous session together. Um, you talked about... Um, how your body changed a little bit, you know, you know, when you first got there to Maine. So um, you want to walk me through that transition? Yeah. So when I was actually first recruited by University of Maine, I was 246 pounds. I lied to them and told them I was 275 pounds. They know about this. So that's why I'm not afraid about putting this on the internet. Um, I got with a trainer, got with a nutritionist, put on about 30 pounds, got about to 275 pounds. That's when I came in here my freshman year. And ever since then, I've been putting on 10 to 15 pounds a year, trying to get my body to the right weight. I want to be, I want to finish around 310, 315. So I've slowly been, you know, doing the right things that I need to do, not only on the field, but, you know, eating as well. Cool. And again, just want to mention to the people that might be watching, um, what are you listed at these days? So I'm currently listed at 6'4", 315 pounds. 6'4", 315 pounds, so definitely a decent size there as, as a center, um, you know, and a, a lot of people, um, you know, looking forward to you and what you, you have to bring to the table this season. Um, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and talk about your guys' offense. Um, how, would you, how would you describe your uh, offense there at Maine in general? Well, fast moving offense. I mean, we like to spread the ball out wide at times, you know, like to hit a lot of we did in the past, we did a lot of outside zone, but now we're transitioning to more of inside zone, more mid zone, a lot of duo, a lot of gap. So, and you know, we like to run the ball, but you know, don't be afraid of saying that we don't have uh, threats on the outside. You know, when a lot of teams like to, you know, throw the box on us, and so when that happens, we're just gonna throw a slant across the middle, open it up to our receivers and give them the best opportunities to make plays as well. Gotcha. And how do you fit in that offense? Again, I have you there as a center, but how do you fit in that offense? What, what, what's your role overall? So as a center, I mean, um, like every other team, I, I don't know actually about how many other teams work, but our role is to make the calls, make the right line uh, calls for the offensive line. So I put us in the tight end a lot of times in the right calls and uh, deciding what the blocking scheme is going to be for that specific play. 
However, like my role in the exact offense is I like to say that the ball, you know, mostly gets ran behind my back, my guard's backs. And, you know, because in gap scheme, you know, the ball is always going to run behind you. So I like to get, you know, the penetration, get movement on the defensive line to be able to create those holes for our running back. Yeah. And I mean, again, like you said, I mean, um, you know, when you're when you are playing uh, out there as a center, typically the center is making a lot of calls. But, uh, you know, I, I realize also um, you are looked at as um, a team leader, of course, being, a, a, I think, a two time team captain. Right. So uh, tell me about uh, you and your uh, leadership skills overall. I mean, in the, I've learned from a lot of guys that came in the past. I've had Drew Belcher, um, Chris Ferguson. We call him Scoop. A lot of past captains, Andre Miller is another one who's currently with the Giants. That ball done a great job, you know, really that I've taken for granted, but now I look at him like that's what a captain is. That, that's what a real leader was. So that's, I kind of, I kind of want to build my own leadership role and be my own person, but I also take different aspects of each one of them and like see what they did, uh, you know, make the team, respect them, make the team want to listen to them and stuff like that. So I take little aspects from each of them to, you know, really grow myself. Yeah, I mean, like you had mentioned, I mean, a, a lot of guys that came before you there at, at Maine, and, you know, definitely some good quality players there. Um, let's give a shout out to at least a couple guys that are there, buddy. I mean, um, I know um, uh, previously I have talked to some guys that uh, had been your teammates, probably one of the best guys there and, and Liam Dobson. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, what's going on these days, man? Um, who are the guys that we need to uh, keep an eye on? Yeah, so there's a, there's a bunch of talent that I like to say. So to start off on the offensive side, uh, to give a big shout out to Sean Bowman. That guy, he's one of our captains as well this year. He, that kid's grown so much since me and him got here back in 2018. He's a phenomenal player. He's, I, in my opinion, one of the best tight ends in college football, let alone FCS. Um, Joe Fagnano, he's our redshirt junior quarterback now, I think. Um, again, he came in, played right away after Chris Ferguson got injured. Again, he's one of those guys who's in the captain role who, as well, you know, can, is a big playmaker, makes plays by running and by passing. Uh, Freddie Brock is a big time running back. Um, you know, he's a very shifty guy. So when he has the ball, a lot of defenses don't like that. Um, as well as, you know, some other guys, Jacob Henney. I like what happened. Jacob Henney. Um, Matias Stout, so a lot of other guys that have had the opportunity to make a big time plays on the offense. Defense aside, I mentioned to you, Vince Thomas earlier. He's going to be a big time player. Uh, we have Bugs, um, as well as Adrian Otero, who leads the defense. He's a captain. And, you know, there's a bunch of guys that I wish I could name, but, you know, I would be listing the whole team, so. It sounded as if you listed most of them anyway. So yeah. um, <laughs> uh, for, for those that we didn't mention, I, you know, just uh, we're just asking for forgiveness, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, Michael, um, you know, one of the things that I have kind of uh, introduced you as is um, one of, uh, well, really the top uh, center um, at the FCS level, at the small school level. And, and I kind of just want to get your take on that. Um, you know, how does that, um, how does that sound? How does that make you feel to, to, you know, get that sort of, um, you know, recognition and uh, what's your response to that overall? So, I mean, I feel like what anyone would feel, I mean, I feel honored, I feel blessed. I mean, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's what I make of it. I can take that and, be okay with it and be, you know, the best small school center, what a lot of say, but you know, there's other people that say I'm not the best small school center. I have a lot of proof still. I have my senior season coming up. So I just want to take the most of this opportunity. I want to show uh, NFL teams and all these professional teams that I can be more than just a center too. I can play every position. I can play guard. I can play right and left, whatever they need me to play. So I want to be able to show that, you know, there's more than me than just a center. There's more than just being just, you know, so-called the best small school center. I want to be, you know, I want to excel at everything that I do from mentally weight room to on the field game. Yeah, and, and, and I know that you're, um, you've already accomplished a lot of what uh, you had mentioned there. So um, what, what do you feel does separate you as a prospect? I mean, um, again, you kind of mentioned some of those things, but 
um, let's just kind of um, hash it out one last time. Um, when we're looking at you as a center or as an offensive lineman overall, um, what do you feel is that one, um, maybe that one or two characteristics that really, you know, set you apart? I think my first one's going to be preparation. I, I don't take any opponent lightly, no matter if it's, you know, a small, a small FCS team that we have on our schedule or Boston College that we're going to have on our schedule this upcoming year. Every team's the same. We ran close games with these small school FCS teams and beating these bigger time FBS teams as well. So it's just preparation, taking every game like it's the same. Don't take any opponent lightly because the times you take your opponents lightly is the time you're going to be shocked and you're going to get your butt kicked. So just, I think preparation to start and two is just being, staying on top of everything that I know I have to get done. If that's from the classroom or for, you know, getting my football, you know, understanding my playbook to understanding the weekly game plan. I know that goes with preparation, but I feel like there's much more than that. It's just like even getting my body right, understanding what needs to be done to be successful that week. If I'm, if I'm having a muscle, a light tip, muscle injury, be able to rehab that and getting it back right. Interesting. So um, with this being your last season there at Maine, what's the one, uh, what's the one game that you've got circled on your calendar, man? I mean, what's the one game that we really need to look forward to this season? I'm going to be honest with you. I have two games circled. It's the first game of the season. It's New Mexico. And it's also uh, Boston College. Those are my two games that I'm really looking forward to this year. Those are big time games. And I know uh, this whole team is excited for those two games, especially. But again, we have the goal is one game at a time. So focusing on New Mexico for now. Definitely. So I'm um, definitely looking forward to what you guys got going on this season. Um, as of uh, the date today, man, I mean, um, what's like uh, your biggest moment so far there at, um, at Maine? I think my biggest moment was in, back in 2018 when we won the CAA championship to Elon. Uh, ended up beating them outright. And, you know, because I don't know if you remember back in 2018, there was like three or four teams that were tied, almost oh, yeah. tied to me, um, the CAA champions. So we ended up taking the win. And then it was, you know, just traveling all over the country, going out to Utah, playing Weber State, then flying back out uh, the West Coast four days later to play Eastern Washington. That game didn't go the way we wanted it to, but, you know, that's still been, you know, one of my highlights, just having that opportunity and saying that, you know, we, we've done it in my career. But, you know, I want, I want it again. I'm hungry for it again. So I'm hoping it comes again this year. Well, definitely uh, going to have an opportunity to go out there this season and, uh, you know, prove some people that, um, you know, main football is legit. Get you guys, um, you know, in the playoffs and, you know, have as, you know, far, far run in the playoffs as you possibly can. So, um, we'll see how uh, how this season unfolds. So, um, uh, do want to kind of uh, uh, check? Just um, I don't know. See who this guy is outside of football a little bit. It took me forever to try and pronounce your last name, um, uh, Garachi. Um, and so, um, what else do people need to know about Michael Garachi? You know, I just like hey, I like keeping my friends close. I like keeping a small friend group. I, I, I've had the same group of friends since I've been here since freshman year. You know, we've added, we've you know, got a British couple, but I like to keep my close people close to me. My family, my best friends, my linemen, my teammates, my coaches, you know. I like keeping a group small because, you know, I don't like, you know, keeping it wide, keeping it wide and, you know, inviting everyone in and then, you, you know, you get backstabbed by a lot of people. Um, as well as that, I love working out. Love, uh, I have a strength coach, Matt Mulligan. Um, I've been really close with him for the last two years. He's uh, played in the league for 10 years, and now he opened up his gym up here in Maine, Northern Maine Strength. So, you know, I spent a lot of time there over this summer. And I love being outdoors, a lot, a lot of hiking, so. Gotcha. And a guy from uh, Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, nice to uh, get a chance to sit down with a, a, a a fellow Marylander. So um, uh, tell us about your hometown. I live in a small little hometown. I mean, everyone knows each other. It's not, it's nothing crazy. It's been growing a little bit over the past year, but you know, every, everyone knows everyone and like, you can't go anywhere in town without seeing someone you know. So, I mean, the competition of football is, is it the best in the state, like other areas. However, you know, everyone in Maryland does, in Bel Air does want to work. They do want to be get to that college level. So that's something I've noticed in my career as well as, you know, the future prospects coming up that everyone wants to go division one. Everyone has those aspirations in mind. So. Of course. So um, uh, Michael, as we kind of wind down our interview, I want to give you one opportunity to, um, 
you know, address a lot of the scouts out there about you, maybe some that have some doubts, maybe some that really just need to know a little bit more about you. Um, and I want you to go ahead and give them your pitch, man. Um, tell them why they need to take a chance on you, maybe draft you, sign you. And what would you bring to their franchise? So um, go ahead and close this out with that. I mean, I feel like anyone that has their doubts on me, that's all their opinion and stuff isn't really going to change about them because that's how a lot of these haters are in this world. However, you know, anyone that does believe in me does, you know, think that I'm going to have a, be able to see at the next level. It's just wait to see what I do this year because, you know, I'm more, I'm, I can't be more than excited. I've prepped the last, you know, seven, nine months for this. So I'm ready to go this year. And I think my film's going to speak this year for itself. Awesome. Well, definitely looking forward to this season and uh, wish you best of luck with everything you got going on. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Sure. Once again, uh, Michael Garachi, um, he's a center out of uh, Maine. Uh, definitely uh, looking forward to uh, what you got going on this season. All right, bud. Thank you.